Microsoft Office PowerPoint is a great place to showcase your photos. Let's look at the best ways to add photos to PowerPoint slides. I've uploaded some pictures from my camera to my Pictures folder, so I'm ready to begin. First, I'll create an instant slideshow using Photo Album. This is a good method when you want to insert all of your pictures at once. You start with a blank presentation. Go to the Insert tab and click Photo Album. To select your photos, click the File Disk button. Find the folder that contains your pictures. To select several pictures, press the Control key and click the ones you want to add. Then click Insert. The list shows the pictures you've selected for the album. Here you can preview the pictures, arrange their order in the slideshow, and choose a layout. Let's choose one picture per slide. Now click Create. The pictures are added to the slides. Now I'd like photo captions. To open the dialog box again, I click the arrow next to Photo Album. Then click Edit Photo Album and select the Captions Below All Pictures checkbox. Then I click Update. The picture's file names are used as the captions. You can change that by double-clicking a caption and typing new text. So that's Photo Album. Now, what if you want to insert pictures one at a time using varied layouts? Let's do that. In another presentation, I plan to insert photos of my cats. I'll do this using two different methods. Here's one way. You add a new slide and choose a blank layout. Then, click the Insert tab and click Picture. Locate the picture. Click Insert. When you add a picture to a blank layout, PowerPoint sizes it to the full width of the slide. To resize the picture, point to a corner and look for the two-headed arrow. Then, drag the corner in or out. If you drag the corner, you maintain the aspect ratio. That is, you keep the picture's height and width proportional. To move the picture, point to it and watch for the four-headed arrow. Drag to move it. If you want to be more exacting about the picture's position, use the alignment tools. Here's how. When the picture is selected, you'll see Picture Tools and the Format tab. Find the Align button and choose Align Center to center the picture. Now for another method. If you want PowerPoint to do more of the work for you when you insert a picture, use one of the content layouts. This layout, Content with Caption, gives you space on the left to add text, with the picture on the right. Picture with Caption is another, more artsy choice. The title and content layout is the most basic. I'll use that as an example. All content layouts include these icons, which you can use to insert pictures, clip art, tables, and other things. Click the picture icon to insert your picture. PowerPoint sizes and positions the photo to fit the layout. I'll type my title, and that's it. I want the same look for my next slide, so I'll stick with this layout. I can just press Enter to add a new slide with the same layout. Now I'll insert a picture of my cat Brutus. I'd like a different layout for two other photos. Another way to get the layout gallery is to right click a thumbnail. With this layout, I can put two pictures side by side. Now all my pictures are in place. This photo is a good candidate for cropping. There's a lot of nice grass, but I'd rather show more of Isabel. Cropping and then resizing will help. Here's how I do it. First, I select the picture to see the Format tab under Picture Tools. Before cropping, I'll make a note of the picture's dimensions over in the Size group. For example, this picture is 4.95 inches high and 7.36 inches wide. This matters because I'll want to resize the picture, roughly, back to these dimensions after I crop it. I click Crop and little black handles appear. I drag the handles in to get the composition I want. I'll leave more grass on one side, and will crop close on the top, right, and bottom.
then I'll turn off cropping. Just so you know, you can use numbers to do your cropping, sizing, and positioning by opening this dialog box. Another thing to note is that by default, these two options are selected, the lock aspect ratio and relative to original picture size checkboxes. These ensure that when you change the height or width of the picture, the other dimension will change proportionally. To bring the picture back to its original size, I'll type in the height and press Enter. The width adjusts automatically. Depending on how you crop the picture, the width may not come out to be exactly what it was before, but it will be close. You may have to work with cropping and resizing to get the dimensions that you want. Use the alignment tools to center the picture. Align it to the slide by clicking Align Center, then use arrow keys to move it up or down. Now the real fun begins. Use Picture Styles on the Format tab to give your photos an artistic finish. Add frames, shadows, reflections, even change the shape of the photo. You have a lot of choices, but a little will go a long way. I'm going for this beveled matte white frame, but I can pick a different color for it. The colors under Picture Border stay within the color scheme of the slide design, that is, the color of the background, text, and other elements in the slideshow. I'll go for this shade of green. Picture effects offer subtle additions, such as bevels, glows, and a range of shadows. I want a perspective shadow, like this. It's a small but effective touch. What about my other pictures? Do I have to repeat these steps to apply the same styles? No. I just select the picture I've already formatted, go to the Home tab, and double-click the Format Painter. Then, I go to the next slide, click the photo, and the complete picture style is applied. I'll space these out a bit so we can see the shadow. Then, I'll even out the photo's spacing across the slide by using the Align commands. I make sure that Align to Slide is selected on the menu, then I can select Distribute Horizontally, and that corrects the photo's horizontal spacing. And there's the slideshow. I think even Isabel and Brutus would be satisfied.